The expedition wanders through Mirkwood. Some are singing to keep their spirits up. Others are just chatting with one another. And some have even taken up sleeping in the back of carts. At the front of the company, Balin, Ori, and Owen, and Flowey walk together. They are in deep discussion of how to deal with whatever they find in the mountain. Flowey starts to explain his plan on how the dwarves will deal with Durin's bane, the Balrog. They will lead it into a room, then Flowey will magically seal the door, very similar to how the hole and gate is sealed. Only Flowey will know the magic words so that no one else can awaken or open the door to the Balrog. It will not be easy, though. The Balrog has roamed through the depths of Moria for many years. There is no telling what kind of vile corruption has spread because of its presence. The best chance at finding the Balrog is going to the deepest parts of Moria, where it was first discovered. Flowey gives Ori a book and tells him he has a very important mission ahead of him. Flowey has deemed Ori responsible for taking notes of the entire journey. All events will be documented in this book. Ori questions why him, and Flowey reassures it's because of his morals, his heart, his determination, and that because Flowey trusts him. In Flowey's eyes, there is no other dwarf with the same amount of heart as Ori. And so, Ori was tasked with taking notes of the entire expedition, from when they left to Balin's journey to Mirkwood, and will continue to write down the journey until the very end. At this point, the dwarves have made it through Mirkwood. Balin thanks the elf guides granted to him by Thranduil and tells the dwarves that they will rest here for tonight. Only a few more days of travel left. And as the dwarves wake up, and the new day begins, the dwarves begin to sing once more. The world was fair, the mountains tall, in elder days before the fall of mighty kings of Lord, and God who now be They travel along the Anduin River, past the Kerok, through the Kelduin Vale, making sure that they stay on the outside borders of Lothlorien until they arrive at Lake Miramir. However, they are not alone when they arrive. Black smoke rises in the direction of the mountains. They think there's another group of dwarves that have arrived until a troll roar echoes off the mountains. That is no dwarf. Balin sends scouts to see what lies ahead. Frar, Nolly, and Loni volunteer and head off. Balin, Owen, Flowey, and Ori get into a debate about next steps. The only other way into Moria is on the western side, through the Holland Gate. It is a long journey from here. Orcs shouldn't be here, though. They are far from home. Something does not feel right. Frar, Nolly, and Loni return. The entrance to Moria seems to be completely covered, with no way to sneak past them. The numbers do seem small, but there's no knowing how many are inside the mountain already. Their only option is to fight or go around the other side of Moria through the Holand Gate. 
After much deliberation, Flowey and Balin decide they fight. They have come too far now to be chased away from their home by orcs, and it will take a long time to reach the western side. Balin orders the dwarves to prepare for battle. Frar lets out a cheer in excitement. Hello again! Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know it was a little bit smaller than usual, uh, or at least the video was at least, um, in comparison to the other videos. Uh, in in if if this was the actual movie or show, it obviously wouldn't be this short. I couldn't really find a good solid way to express the dialogue that would be happening in this episode and convert that to this narration storytelling thing rather than me. I guess I could have just, you know, sat there reading all the lines back and forth through like 10 different characters, but that just didn't seem very realistic. So I took, I tried to take what I could from the dialogue and just turn it into this narration. Um, but this would be an episode that uh, focuses on character development, uh, dialogue, and, and all that good stuff. We just came off of a really extreme episode with the fight in Gundabad in the flashback sequence with Thranduil's wife and Thrain and all and the gems and all that stuff. So we need a bit of a of a break before the next episode, which is we lead into another fight. So rather than having kind of two episodes in the middle of the season, essentially, back to back, having these epic fights, which I guess, you know, is exciting. But uh, in practice, it's a lot. It's a lot to take in as the audience when especially when we just we don't we need more character growth first. Um, so that's why the, there's some, I tried to put in the important stuff, at least in, in this little narration here with Flowey talking to Ori about how much he's, how much he means to him and why he's choosing him to use the book of Marsable, uh, as they're essentially taking notes of the journey and keeping a record of everything that they do because Flowey was supposed to do it. But he feels like uh, Ori is better suited for it. Um, and Flowey wants to mentor Ori throughout this journey as well. So there, there's just a lot of... There's some growth between the two of them there uh, that happens. And then we're gonna there'll be small banter and whatnot between the three brothers, Frar, Nolly, Loni, and then Hona as well. Um, nothing like really story. Um, sorry, my back's a little itchy here. Uh, nothing story related, but just banter, show more character depth, uh, that kind of thing. Um, and really, yeah, the entire episode is, is just dialogue. Uh, dialogue traveling we've got the the next part of the poem or song uh that's from the fellowship of the ring book so i threw that in there uh as we just have like a little traveling montage of them going along the river past the care rock the, there could be could throw in some dialogue of of Balin, owen and ori making a comment about of them being there uh, that's where the eagles drop them off. Um, could maybe go into the dwarfs' uh, viewpoints of um, of this of this region, right between the Karak and Lothlorien. Maybe they've heard rumors of more like beastmen or like. Uh, farmers that work with or get along with uh Bayorn and his people um 
maybe a reference to Radagast in there because Roscabel is in that area as well. Uh, they would pass over the Gladden Fields through the Kelduin Vale, um, where um, uh, that's where Isildur lost the ring. So I don't know that we could have maybe some spirits make an appearance or Oathbreaker type beings, the dwarf's interpretation of that fight. You know, there's just there's a lot of stuff that could happen um, to to fill the episode, but it wasn't a lot that there wasn't a lot I could do to translate it into a nice narration format as much. Um because it's all just like bits and pieces of things that are just, and and it's just characters talking about what they're what they're seeing, um, and what their thoughts are on what ha- on what happened in these areas. Uh, they, they'll talk about Lothlorien, and could and build more on like why she's a witch and the dwarves don't like her, kind of thing, which Gimli makes references to in the Fellowship of the Ring. So there's lots of stuff to play with, but there wasn't a whole lot that I could turn into their narration style format that we've been doing so far. Um, so I do apologize for the shorter episode, but I do hope that. Uh, my explanation makes sense and that the episode isn't just a total waste that if there was, if there was, this was to actually be filmed and and whatnot, that there's more to it than just what you heard, um, as with all the episodes, but this is definitely one of the shorter ones for sure. Um, but yeah, next week, uh, I'll try if, if I have the time, I do have a busier week next week so i'll see what i can do i'm hoping i can get it out in time but next week what i'll do is uh it'll be a bigger episode because it's a bit of a bigger fight um and that's easier to tell in a narration style format than this dialogue stuff uh because i can explain the actions that are happening and what what you're visually seeing uh, so that'll be an exciting one. And it's also the, I think if I remember right, it's technically the first event that Tolkien references in the book of Marzabal, uh, or Marzabal, well, however you pronounce it. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. But when the Fellowship or and, and Gandalf find the book, right, on Ori's corpse in Balin's tomb... Um, in the Fellowship of the Ring book, not the movie, but the book, uh, I think one of the very first lines that Gandalf is able to uh, make out is um, there was a battle at Mir Mir, or a great battle was held there, and um, to avoid spoilers for now, something specific happened uh in in that little passage um so so th- i it's an exciting moment because uh for me at least because it's the first moment that i actually got to use tolkien's reference to Balin's expedition and be like okay bam throw that in there so that's next episode and we'll talk more about that next week hopefully but yeah Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for the support, as always. Thanks for sticking around. If you made it this far, I appreciate you. Once again, as always, leave a comment on what you liked. Leave a comment on what you didn't like. Share it with your friends. If you share it with with your friends, tell them to leave a comment. The YouTube algorithm uh, does better with comments. Um, the TikTok algorithm does okay with likes, but comments on it do, comments on each video do even better for the algorithm. So if we want as many people as possible to see this, leave that comment, um, and, and, and share it. Those are the best ways to get this viewed by as many people as possible, which is what we all want. We all want this story to be told because we're, as far as... I'm seeing everyone's enjoying it, so and I do appreciate that. 
But enough of my rambling. Thank you very much. And until next time, I will see you in another video. Bye-bye.